Question 15. This is where we took our deep beam and at the architect's request we put openings in it so it's essentially become a veer and deal structure. There's four openings and to form large windows. In chapter 2.6, it's figure 2.619, it shows verandils. It's a span of 12 metres, depth 3 metres. The distance between the mullions is 2.6 metres, and it's 2.2 deep, and each section of the concrete is 0.8. We use a safety factor of ultimate of 1.5. And note for any deflections we use a serviceability with no factor. The figures are given, which are referenced 2.6.22, 2.11.2, and the reinforcement is not in the book, but we'll go over this in this video. Question 15a, and we set up our Viren deal and we have a loading of 129 kilonewton meters reference 14a and we put the shears at the ends of 774 kilonewtons so we draw a free body diagram this is going back to us um, chapter 2.6 and we have a moment at the end of 774 times the width between the mullions which is 774 times 2.6 to a 12 kilonewton meters and our approximation to this is that we will divide this by 4 for the for the bending moment in each element. So it's 2012 over 4 which is 503 kilonewton meters noting the balancing forces at the top. Question 15b we're now going to draw a free body diagram and we would like to find out what the forces are on the top and bottom cords in the middle of the beam in the mid span position so compression and balance in tension the depth of section is 2.2 meters that's the average width taken distance apart so at the moment from 14a is 2322 kilonewton meters so 2322 divided by the lever arm 2.2 gives us 1055 kilonewtons just a footnote to make sure that if you're modeling this on a computer to check it which is which is useful to do then make sure that the right hand side or the left hand side is allowed to move sideways i.e. a wheelie connect connection if you like otherwise you'll get different results Question 15C, and we're going to look at this. We get a, a neutral axis in the section. We're going to we're going to try um, an effective eye section, which is 2AY bar squared. If you look in chapter 2.6, you'll see this, and we come up with an eye value of 39 times 10 to 6 centimeters to the 4. If you take the moment of simply supported beam, 5WL to the 4 over 384EI. Put the I value for concrete long term is 12 times 10 to the 3 newtons per millimeter squared, and with consistent units, it gives us a deflection of 5 millimeters. It can be noted that a computer model was set up with similar parameters and it came up with 18 millimeter deflection, which is a lot more. This is because the veering deal behaves as a frame rather than a beam section, so care needs to be taken. Question 15D, and we're going to go through this fairly quickly, but we'll recap on this in another slide. So we, we effectively set up a lever arm in which the compression zone is 90%, 0.9 times the mid-depth, half the depth, and the bars from the cover from the bottom is 67 millimeters so if we, if we take these away from the depth we get 553 millimeters as a lever arm the tension bars is the moment divided by the lever arm the moment from from before gives you 909 kilonewtons and the area required is 909 divided by the 500 which is the yield of the bars 8 1818 millimeters squared which is 4 
25 diameter bars. And going through, we've slowed this down a bit. The shear stress, first of all, we work this out from the reaction at the support, the maximum shear, divided by the effective depth, if you like, which is the 800 minus that 67 millimeters. And we divide that by the width, and it's there's two arms, if you like, which gives 2.6 newtons per millimeter squared. So the area required is a simplistic formula. This is the area required for shear reinforcement. And don't worry, we'll recap this in the next slide. Is SV, which is the spacing times the shear stress times the width of the section divided by FY, which is the yield strength of the reinforcement bars. So we, we multiply those figures out. We come with 208 millimeters squared. And if we take two 12 diameter bars, the area of two legs, if you like, going upwards is 226 millimetres, which is greater than 208, so this is sufficient. Now we're going to lead on the next slide to recap. To make things clear, because this hasn't been covered in the book and it's quite, quite useful formulae, we're going to recap on those two equations for the bending reinforcement and the shear reinforcement. So recapping on 15D, the bending reinforcement, we're going to draw out the section to show you the parameters that we've used. And the total depth of the section is D, so if we take half the depth, and 90% of this depth gives us our compression zone in the concrete. And we take the bars and the center line of the group of bars, the distance of that from the bottom of the, the section is a cover plus bars depth over two, half the bar depth. And again, the compression zone is 90% D over two. So T is the tension zone. And the lever arm is derived from taking away the 0.45 d over 2 which is half the compression zone minus the cover minus the bar depth over 2 which is the tension zone region and this will give the lever arm for bending which is uh, an approximate assessment the tension in the bars is given by m over la where m is the moment in kilonewton meters and la is the lever arm in meters the shear reinforcement we draw the section on elevation and we have the links and then we draw the section and they're drawn in a loop with two legs shown in this particular example ASV equals SVW VS over FY the area of the links is the total number of legs the total area SV is the spacing of the bars W is the width, VS is the shear stress, and FY is the yield of the reinforcement. Again, we, we will emphasize that this is an approximation. It will tend to overestimate the reinforcement, but it's useful for first approximations. I trust this is clear. Thank you for listening. Thank you.